Hey, what's up everyone? My name is William and today we're going to be going over uh, some sampling tips and tricks uh, using the EXS24 and you know this is kind of just a video to really show you you know ways you can use the EXS24 to make uh, new instruments from samples. Um, so first of all I've just loaded up a new session here and I've loaded an instrument track and uh, that is all I've done. Next we're going to load up our EXS24 in stereo mode onto our track to load up a new instrument. Uh, we're not going to mess with any of this. We're mostly going to be working in the instrument um, window and the audio editing window of the EXS24. Um, and so yeah, let's just jump right into it. So first let's find a sample uh, in order to you know, use to create an instrument out of. So I was looking at, through some samples and I thought it might be cool to use a percussion sample. Uh, and we're going to use the African Ghana Kit 05 uh, MIDI clip that is in our Apple Loops library. So, um, you know, first of all, this is just what it sounds like. This is a MIDI clip with MIDI notes. Um, you know, and it's just using a drum kit instrument. So let's just listen to what this sounds like, and then let's start using some of these samples to make a customized instrument in our sampler. So one thing I think would be very cool to do is if we used, you know, um, some of those lower uh, tones near the end, as well as, um, as well as some of the higher tinier percussion uh, samples to create a customized instrument, you know, using different velocities and things like that. So first I'm going to highlight all these uh, notes up here and just mute them. Now let's listen to what we have uh, in our MIDI clip playing. So I really like this last sample and I also like Let's see. I'm going to uh, just delete some of these. And let's just listen to the four that we have now. So those are the four samples I think that uh, we should use. Uh, it's just personal preference, you know. Uh, if you want to use some of these other, uh, you know, tinier sounding samples, then definitely do so. Um, so next what we're going to do is bounce this MIDI clip into an audio file. And we're going to do that by, uh, you can either use this command here or I just right clicked on it and click bounce in place. Uh, and then we'll get this option to bounce the region in place, creating a new audio file. So I'm just going to click OK. And now we have an audio clip with those four, uh, you know, samples. So now the next thing to do is using our audio uh, editor view in Logic, <clears throat> we can zoom in and split these up into separate samples. So I'm just going to zoom in here, uh, get my cursor lined up near the beginning, and then I'm gonna click Command T, which splits the region at the playhead. Uh, next, we're gonna go uh, a little bit down further. Uh, right here should be fine. And I'm gonna split the region at the playhead again. And now we have this first sample in a uh, section of its own. Now we're just going to do that for the rest of these real quick. Let's see. And try not to cut off the beginning of any of these, um, you know, while, uh, while splitting these, you know, because if you cut off the beginning, you might get some weird, uh, you know, clicking sounds at the beginning of your audio file or something like that. And kind of just, you know, uh, get it to a point where you know uh, the signal should have died out. Um, you know, you don't want to cut off the end of the signal uh, just like you don't want to cut off the beginning of the signal. So that's just something to keep in mind. So now that I've split these up, it should be, you know, fairly, um, fairly 
good. Now let's just listen to what we have to make sure none of it sounds weird uh, and there's no, uh, you know, none of the audio is cutting off or anything like that. So I noticed on the second one, it sounded like the beginning was cut off a little bit. I'm going to click on this and just drag it back a teeny bit. Let's zoom in first, like so. And that should be fine. Uh, we can also use fade tools later uh, when we drag these samples into EXS24. So that's just something to keep in mind. Drag that out a little bit more. Now let's listen to it one more time. Okay, so there's still some clippings, but uh, it should be good enough. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is, um, even though we've separated these clips, Logic still looks at them as being part of the same clip uh, since you know it's getting the data from the same clip still. So what we need to do now is bounce each of these uh, individual clips at the, um, you know, separately. So we have our first sample here, our second sample here, our third sample, and finally our fourth sample. So now we have bounced each of them individually. We can get rid of that track right here and just uh, delete that track. I'm also uh, just going to get rid of the African kit that we had uh, because I'm not going to use it anymore uh, for this video. Of course, again, if you wanted to use some other samples in that you could. And if we use one of the audio samples rather than a mini clip, we wouldn't have had to do as much. We could have just split up the original audio clip. Um, you know, if we use like one of these audio clips, for example, we would just had to split them up and then bounce these samples separately. We wouldn't have to uh, bounce into an audio file and then uh, split them up, uh, if that makes sense. I hope you uh, understand what I mean by that. So next, let's uh, you know open up our EXS24, our blank instrument, and click on this edit option. So again, I've said in the previous uh, EXS24 videos, if you don't have that edit button, uh, it's because your advanced tools are not enabled. And you do that by going to the Logic Pro at the top here, going to preferences, and then scrolling all the way down to advanced tools. Now, all you have to do is make sure all of these checkboxes are enabled, uh, allowing us to have some of the more advanced tools in Logic. Um, you know, there's no reason you should have these disabled, to be honest. It starts disabled by default when you get Logic, um, but there's no reason to have them disabled. All right, so let's click on this edit option and it opens our instrument window again. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to drag each of these samples into our, our, uh, our EXS24. And before I do that though, I'm just going to again, listen to um, each of these samples just so I can remember which uh, sample uh, is which. Okay, so this last one is probably one of my favorites. Um, so we're gonna do this one first. And just to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna drag the window up and then drag it into there like so. Now I'm just gonna mute that track so I know that I've dragged that in already. Okay, so now by default, as soon as we drag that in, it assigned it to the entire keyboard. And so if we start playing notes, you can hear uh, the sample playing. It's a little quiet though, so I'm gonna turn the volume up. Awesome. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is just double click on this um, and I'm going to zoom in on our audio editor here. And I'm going to highlight the very beginning and we're gonna do a fade in right there just to make it a little bit smoother. And, and of course, if you know, if you uh, want to be more precise with it, you can. I'm doing this kind of quickly, some of these fades, um, you know, just so we can get something. And I'm doing a fade out at the end, just so we make sure there's no, um, you know, 
it's a smooth ending as well. Even though we can't tell, you know, looking like uh, right there, it looks like it's smooth, but that's just to make sure. Okay. Uh, I probably did the fade in a little too much. It's not as punchy anymore, but that's fine. We'll, we'll, uh, that, that's fine with me, you know. So next, let's listen to our samples again that we haven't inserted and uh, see which one we want to put in next. Um, so I'm going to drag in this sample, and that is zone two now. And so by default, it put them on the exact same key ranges. So one thing I can do is I can change the key range of zone one since it's a uh, more bassy tone, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make it the lower notes. I'm gonna just click and drag, and you know, so everything you know below C2 is that zone. And for this next one, I'm gonna do everything above. Oops, I grabbed the window rather than the zone. I'm having trouble grabbing it there. So what I'm gonna do is just I'm going to go up to zone two right here and then just increase this key range here. So we have the two different options, you know, to change the key range. And now since they're not interfering with each other, they're no longer on top of each other. So now just a quick example. C2 sounds like that. It's our second sample we dragged in and below that, And now, another thing to note is um, whether or not we want th where the um, you know default pitch is. So, for example, if we listen to our zone one, uh, whoops, wrong note. That's already pitched down from where the original tone was. And that's because it's saying the original pitch is on C3. So it's acting as if we're going, you know, uh, more than an octave below that original pitch. So if we want, we can change the original pitch of this down to uh, C2 or even C1 maybe. And it will act as if, um, you know, C1 is the uh, starting note for that. So now the note right below C2 is a uh, pitched up version of our first sample. And then I'm gonna do the same for zone two. I'm gonna change the starting note to C2 just so that first note is uh, the original pitch. Now let's do some different things. First, let's listen to our two samples that we have left uh, to determine what we wanna do with them. So this last one, this second one right here, or I guess it's the third sample of our four samples, um, it's a little bit deeper tone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put that on the same key range as our, um, as our bassy sample. But what we're gonna do is if we click view and then click velocity range, we're gonna do some cool stuff here. So zone one is our deep bass uh, note, and we want that to only play when our note is hit really hard. So I'm going to change the velocity range from you know 0 to 127 to 75 to 127. So only when the velocity of the notes below C2 is 75 or higher, um, that bass note will play, that bass sample. And for zone three, since it's the same key range, I'm going to do that except the exact opposite. Everything beneath 74 uh, is going to be uh, the uh, the more percussive uh, sample that we have there. So let's just listen to what's happening now. Oh, and of course, first before I do that, I'm going to change the original pitch uh, key to C1 for uh, this third sample that we've put in. So now let's listen to what this sounds like. So I'm changing that just by simply
just by simply, um, you know, changing the velocity of how hard I'm pressing it. And I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit just because uh, it's still, you know, it's, you know, it's more comfortable for me right here to um, change the samples with velocity. So now we got that cool effect happening where if I press a note softly, it's playing our third sample. If I press it harder, it's playing that first sample. So as you can see, you know, as we're beginning to do some of this stuff, um, we have a lot of control over what's happening with our samples. Now let's just insert the last sample and then do the same except let's do it in the same key range as our second zone here. So uh, let's change this to that zone and then we're going to do the same type of thing happening here where we're going to have that sample only playing when we hit the velocity very hard, 85. And now this one only playing when we're hitting the velocity under 74. And again, I'm gonna change the original pitch to C2. And just turn the volume up there. So now, So now we get this cool effect happening where we have a lot of control. And of course, we don't have to have the key ranges this big. You know, we could do um, very small key ranges and just have them in different key ranges. You know, um, if we wanted, we could have zone one, this very bassy tone. We could just set it to C1 to um, B1, or excuse me, D1. Um, then for this next, uh, sample that was in the same key range as our base sample, we could change the key range of that to, let's just do E1 to G1. And I'm going to change the original pitch of that to E1. Same thing for these two. You know, I could change the uh, key range of this one. I'm going to change it down to A1. And then the high of this, I'm going to change it down to B1. Again, gonna change the original pitch to the starting note of that range, if I could, there we go. And then leave this last one on C2 and then change the maximum to D2. So now, instead of that happening, I'm gonna turn off the velocity ranges. <clears throat> now we have, you know, So we get those kind of effects happening. And this is just some of the stuff that you can do with the EXS24. And of course, I'm going to save this instrument real quick. Uh, let's just call it Sampler Instrument. I'm perfectly fine with that name. And then we have all the options here of the EXS24 to further edit our sound and make it uh, even more unique. Um, but that about sums it up for this tutorial, some tips, some real uh, usage of you know getting a custom sample from the Apple Loops, importing it into the EXS24 and using it as a sampler, changing uh, you know the key ranges, changing how some of them are launched, editing some of those uh, clips that we made. A lot of cool stuff you can do with the EXS24. Definitely experiment with this. Um, you know, use use your own samples, use other samples in in the Apple Loops um, to get a very good understanding of what's happening and to just you know make make cool instruments. Um, but that about sums up this video. I hope you learned something. I hope this was a helpful video. Again, my name is William. Thank you for watching.